Namaskar, hello and a very warm welcome to CIET NCRT's live phone and interactive program. I'm Tanvi Kurana and here we are with a social science program. The topic of discussion is going to be water resources and all the students who are studying in class 10th, you can watch us on Evidya channel number 10. If you have any questions, any queries, please feel free to reach out to us. And uh, we have a guest with us in our studio. Let me please introduce him to all of you. He is Dr. Pushpendra Singh, sir. Very warm Thank welcome. You. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for being with us today. Sir, is the Vice Principal of Maharaja Agrasen Model School, Pitampura, New Delhi. And uh, we are going to talk about water resources, like I said. And there are multiple methods through which you can get in touch with us. Either you can contact us through our number that is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine or you can simply watch us on our YouTube channel that is NCERT official and also another channel is NCERT PM E with their channel number 10. So you can write down your questions, your queries in the live chat box of these channels and uh, you can ask us. So till 4 o'clock we are going to be here and we'll be talking about water resources. Now let's just uh, begin without further ado. Uh, because we are talking about uh, water resources, there is water scarcity in our country. We definitely know that. But let's understand a little better about what exactly is uh, water scarcity and uh, what are the main reasons, main causes of it. Sir, would you like to discuss? Uh, absolutely, ma'am. Uh, first of all, we need to understand that whenever we talk about the water resources, mm -hmm. this is really important for a country like India where population is high. If I talk about water resources, so we need to understand few things. First of all, we have to understand that water can be categorized into two ways. One is the ground water, which is uh, obtained from a depth of more than 15 meter within the earth and it is called ground water. Whereas the other water resource, which is surface water and uh, when we talk about the surface water, it is basically from streams, rivers, lakes, ponds or reservoirs. So that is known as the surface water. So even the water found in ocean is also a part of the surface water. We need to understand why water is important for a country like India. So if we talk about few statistics, though this is not a part of the syllabus, but we to understand the water scarcity, we have to understand that India uh, has a share of 2.4% of the world land, whereas we have 4% of the water resources of the world. But the thing is that we have 17% of the uh, population of the world. And because of this, the water scarcity, we rank 132 among the other, uh, all the countries in the world in the availability of water. So we need to understand when we talk about the water scarcity, basically it is a shortage of water as compared to its demand mm -hmm. because there is more demand because of which water scarcity is created. Now, whenever we talk about water scarcity, there may be various causes of water scarcity. For example, if I say, so increasing population, as I said that population is one of the major cause of uh, water scarcity and in India we have seen that population is increasing at a faster pace and because of this the demand for water is also increasing. Whether it is water is used for domestic purpose or industrial use but it is creating a heavy demand. So, so we have to understand then. Uh, in the agriculture sector, increasing demand for agriculture, that is also a cause of concern for us because the population is increasing and demand for food is also increasing. Because of this, as the demand for food is increasing, agriculture needs and water requirement in the uh, agriculture field is also required. So we need to understand another, there is a, a famous saying or not a saying, this is a poem written by S.T. Coleridge, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who just said that water, water everywhere, all the boat did shrink, water, water everywhere, nor a drop to drink. That means we have plenty of water around us, but still we need to understand there is nor even a drop to drink. As in that chapter, 
the uh, ship was struck in ocean and there was plenty of water around but there was no water for drink in the same manner water scarcity is also artificially created and it may be created because of increasing population or demand for agriculture then urbanization and industrialization are other ways through which the water scarcity has increased because uh, industries are the heavy user of waters and urban needs are also increasing. There is an unequal access of the water. We see that uh, there are different group of people. There are few people who have plenty of water resources and they have access to it. But there are few people who are at the downtrodden people we can say they do not have access to water. And another important thing why water is not available because of the pollution we see the quality of water is deteriorating because of the pollution also and that is also creating water scarcity and another important thing which is one of the most important we have been over exploiting our water resource and this is leading or creating uh, water scarcity, scarcity. Okay. absolutely so, sir, when we are facing uh, this huge crisis called water scarcity and I am sure the government of India is also doing something about it and there are certain uh, missions then, uh, that they have adapted for the people. So, there is one called Jal Jeevan Mission. Absolutely. Would you like to talk about it? Absolutely. Absolutely. We need to understand mm. that government has started with the Jal Jeevan Mission and this Jal Jeevan Mission basically talks about the piped water supply to the rural households by 2024 this is one of the most important aspect which we have to understand and this is one of the basic program launched by in government of india so the goal of jal jeevan mission is that every household should have potable water and when we say potable water it is also tapped water when we say tapped water null se jal that is also one of the important initiative under Jal Jeevan mission. So, we will converge with the other general central and government schemes and integrated demand and supply inside management of water at the local level. These are the basic things which we have to think about Jal Jeevan mission. There is another mission when we talk about that is Atal Bhujal Yojana. This has also been started by the government of India and this talks about the sustainable groundwater management by utilizing community or by community resources then inculcation of behavioral change in promoting judicious use this is one of the most important thing because what happens we see that there is a plenty of water around us and what happens we start wasting that water so we have to be judiciously we have to use those resources because there is only two uh, hardly 2.5 percent of the fresh water in the world and implementation in identification of water stressed areas when we talk about the water stressed areas especially you need to understand that there are few areas like Vidarbha region, Royal uh, Sima, Telangana Plateau so all such areas which are already facing water scarcity uh, so this leads to adds disadvantage because of this government has started such type of scheme which will provide at least uh, less water scarcity will be there and they will be providing more water resources to them. Absolutely. Sir, uh, you very rightfully said that we have to understand that we have to use the water judiciously. So, with that, uh, the ancient period, the earlier period, the people were very uh, you know, smart, intelligent and they have built such structures like we see the certain baulis where they used to store water for uh, the future use of the generation. Absolutely. So, there are certain ancient hydraulic structures in India. What are those structures, how they were built, do we have them in India? Uh, absolutely. We need to understand that uh, India has been one of the that, uh, those countries which has a well developed ancient hydraulic structures and if we see the, uh, that you will find that in ancient India before Christ era also if we say BC in the first century BC we have Srangavir Puram you must have heard the name Srangavir Puram uh, in Ramayana also from where Nishadras belonged. Yes. So, Shrangwer Puram had well developed uh, near Allahabad sophisticated rainwater harvesting structures where channeling of the flood water 
of river ganga there is another during chandragupta maurya he just uh, built several such type of channels or baulis or kuas which he just wells they, those were dig by him there are other evidences which we find sophisticated irrigation networks like kalinga in odisha mm -hmm. nagarjuni konda in andhra pradesh bennur in karnataka and kolhapur in maharashtra in 11th century the bhopal lake one of the largest artificial man made lake was built that is another important thing and we need need not to go anywhere we are sitting in delhi and just nearby us there is hoj khas yes that was built up by iltutmish for supporting water supply to the siri fort mm. so such type of things are found and we have always been one of the countries who have the basic knowledge of or we have been preserving water conserving water for our future generations so our ancestors were smart enough to know that uh, the people will be facing such problem in the future and they have made such arrangements absolutely they knew uh, perfectly that what need to be done in a perfect situation right so there is a multi purpose river valley project what is so special about it okay we need to understand that uh, first of all understanding a uh, multi purpose river projects we need mm. to understand what are dams okay. so when we talk about the dam a dam is a barrier across the flowing water that obstructs directs or retards the flow often creating a reservoir lake or impoundment but what happens often we think that this is structure concrete structure which has been built by human being that is a dam no sorry that is not a dam the reservoir the pool or the lake which has been created that is a dam we need to understand so whenever we talk about such things so multi purpose river valley projects as the name suggest you ask the question what are multi purpose river valley projects mm -hmm. we need to understand whenever we say multi purpose river valley projects basically such type of dams which serve several purpose together they are known as multi purpose river valley projects when we say what are the different purpose so we need to for example they may be flood control for irrigation purpose hydro electricity generation navigation fishing tourism there are several functions which we uh, these dams serves and that's why these were so important that the prime minister the first prime minister of india pandit jawaharlal nehru rightly called them that dams are the temples of modern india okay so that was really a uh, means he has seen so those things and that's why he said because he believed that these projects with their integrated water uh, management approach would integrate the development of agriculture and the village economy with the rapid industrialization and growth of the urban economy that means cities and rural areas both will be simultaneously balanced and development will take place in those two areas and that's why he said that dams are the temples of modern india okay if that was the case uh, then when sardar sarovar dam was built there was an anti dam movement against it so if dams are so important for modern india why was there an protest or an anti movement against it okay we need to understand that dams definitely anything hmm. has two sides okay there may be one positive one may be negative so here also there is one uh, there are several positive and there are few negatives also for example if we are building dam uh, so we have to acquire the land and uh, in which the impoundment will be made and because of that the people who are living in those areas they need to be they will be displaced that was the main issue but we need to understand one of the major dam that is sardar sarovar dam which has been built across the narmada river in gujarat this is one of the largest water resource project india covering four states that is maharashtra madhya pradesh gujarat and rajasthan and this project has provided the water supply to all these states definitely there are few areas where this uh, dam was created and because of this only anti dam movement was started okay but this is not the only thing there are other things also because these dams may lead to uh, other things for example if i say there are uh, interstate water disputes mm. 
Hmm. That is also happening. For example, let us uh, understand Krishna Godavari dispute is there. Hmm. So, uh, if we talk about the Krishna uh, Krishna River and Go uh, Godavari River disputes, so here Karnataka Andhra Pradesh governments they have objected uh, of the Koena Dam because uh, uh, Maharashtra government is just diverting the water of Koena Dam, and this uh, dam will, uh, if it is diverted, so what will happen? Water will be less available for the uh, downflow, downstream rivers. So that's why they have objected, and this has created. Uh, this was given to the tribunal also. This went Kaveri Water Tribunal and Krishna Godavari River. So such type of uh, interstate disputes also created because of these dams. That is also possible. Okay, like you said, that everything has a plus and a minus point. Absolutely. Okay, and uh, you mentioned about Atal Jal Yojana, and there's another yojana called Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana. What is this yojana, and uh, how is this beneficial for people? Uh, let me tell you, government has taken several initiative. In those in initiatives. This is Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana, which is directly focusing on especially the agriculture and the farmers. Because we have seen that such areas where water scarcity is there, they are facing, there are several suicide cases. So for such areas, government just want that har khet ko pani mile. That is the basic theme of this uh, Pradhan Mantri Krishi uh, Sichai Yojana. Hmm. So, har khet ko agar pani dena hai. So, we have to improve on form water, use efficiency to reduce wastage and increasing availability, both in duration and extent. So, because of this irrigation and other water saving technologies need to be used. So, per drop, more crop. That is that we can say that every drop should be used to give more uh, crops. Okay. So that is the main focus of Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana. That's great. Uh, uh, India is an agricultural land. It has always been. So the farmers uh, are definitely preferred and uh, the agricultural methods, they are always given preference. Sir, so we have come towards the end of the session, but I would like to ask you one last question regarding the rainwater harvesting. We have read this in uh, uh, multiple chapters, multiple times, but still, uh, please discuss this a little bit. Okay, so when we talk about the rainwater harvesting, we need to understand that uh, rainwater is the most ultimate source of water, fresh water, and we have to tap this water for our basic needs. So that's why we are using rainwater harvesting system, and there are several types of rainwater harvesting system in ancient India. Also, traditional methods were adopted. So we can say, like in ancient India. Guls and Kuls in Himalayan, Himalayan region we use, whereas rooftop rainwater harvesting is commonly practiced in drinking water, especially in Rajasthan, inundation channel in West Bengals for flood plains, in arid and semi arid regions of uh, Rajasthan, Jaisalmer, Khadins and Johats are created. So, in semi arid Tankas, rooftop rainwater harvesting system has also been developed. So, we need to understand that all such things are there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing this uh, utter important topic that is water resources with all our children. And I'm sure uh, they have uh, learned a lot. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so Thank much, ma'am. It was a pleasure to be here and to give something to the students which will help them in their future exams. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the viewers as well for being with us today. I really hope that you enjoyed the entire session and uh, if in case you have missed watching this program, please watch it again on our YouTube channel that is NCERT official. And before just leaving, I uh, want to tell you about the upcoming programs. The next program that you are going to see is uh, our special program and uh, this is for class 6 to class 12th. The topic of discussion is going to be digital initiative Swayam. And after 5 o'clock from 5 to 5.30, there is another special program titled Sayog. And this is also for class 6 to class 12th. The topic of discussion is going to be holistic development for student growth. From 5.30 to 6.15, the program is a special series on school leadership development. And this is particularly for class 6, 9 and 12. With this, we are wrapping up this particular program. Thank you so much for being with us today. Have a wonderful day. Take care and happy Dipavali. Namaskar.